Uh, Monday, May 13th, 2024. We'll start with the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance. To the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, all right, let's start the meeting off with a public hearing on three food truck applications. We have Soul Slice Pizza, uh, Terra Firma Food Truck, and Suk Thai Mobile. Not sure if there's any comments, questions, or concerns from the public, but or the board for that matter. Seeing none, I'll close the public hearing and look for an approval of the agenda. So move. Motion by Dan, second by Velma. All those in favor? Motion carries. Public forum. This is the point of the meeting where the public can comment on any non-agenda items. Okay. I haven't got that one yet. You want to talk about it? Yeah. Diane Robbins Arundel. Diane Robbins Mocus, actually. Arundel. I was trying to avoid making too much of a big public thing about it. Um, but it appears that there have been a couple of incidences in the circle in Clearview where the person who wants to do the land trade and wants to put the development in has actually driven in the wrong side of the circle and stopped the bus. And one of the kids hit his head. She hit her head when the bus stopped when he came in the wrong way. So it's happened a couple of times the sheriff have the sheriffs have been down there. So I don't know what the issue is, but he was like taking pictures of the side of the circle where the bus went over the road a little bit. And then there was something, and I'm not quite sure why, but there was some discussion that the bus isn't supposed to use that circle. So I don't know if that's because he's claiming that he owns it and the bus can't use it. But one of the buses that goes down there is for handicapped children. And then there's the other bus for the other child that has an issue. But I wanted you to be aware of it. And and I, I suspect you're probably going to see it, Keith, because the new person that the sheriff's department hired, Majors, is that what it is, Majors? Major Moan. Major Moan? She's the one that went down the last time to speak to him. Yeah. So you will probably see that hitting your radar when you start seeing your reports. But I wanted you guys to be aware. Anything else from the public? Looking for approval of minutes for April 29th. Make a motion. We approve as submitted. Motion by Dan. I'll second that. Second by Phil. All those in favor? Minutes. We don't have any committee and board reports this evening. So, Mr. Manager. Uh, just to give you a little bit of information now, uh, the adjuster finally uh, got back uh, to the um, uh, folks that have the uh, uh, Allegiance truck over in Saco on our fire truck. Um, it appears that the repairs are going to be in the vicinity of $19,687.10. As I understand right now, um, 
uh, a lot of the material or a lot of parts that are needed to repair it are in back order. They expect another four to six weeks before we have the uh, truck back in our possession. The other, the other piece I have was to uh, select board member um, Hayes had asked for uh, uh, some discussion on the outstanding punch card issue. I've come to an, um, an agreement or an understanding with Casella referenced that. And um, let me just provide um, information so everybody understands what's, what's going to be happening. As you all know, uh, as of uh, the punch cards, we stopped selling to residents as of June 30th of 2023. And at this point, the folks can continue to use them for if they already have them purchased until June 30th of 2024, so the end of this fiscal year. A after which, uh, residents who have unused punch cards can return them to the Arundel Municipal Building for reimbursement until September 1st, 2024. So it's my thought that um, if this meets with some sort of agreement or understanding tonight, then we'll go ahead and advertise this um, so folks can return them after, uh, after the end of the fiscal year. The town will collect all the unused punch cards and return them can sell it with an outstanding, with an amount outstanding to a rental residence. We in turn, will process those checks to those residents who have returned punch cards for reimbursement. I've already spoken to the deputy treasurer. Um, very simple for us to we'll coll collect them, identify who it is, um, total it up, send them a, send them a check um, from the town. Um, Casella, what will happen is that the amount reimbursed to the residents for any unused punch cards will be deducted from the Casella monthly invoice for the transfer station services by the town. So for us to become whole, we'll just take it off our monthly bill, um, send it off to them, and then our folks, whoever have these outstanding, will get paid. So. Is this full punch cards only? Yes. Full unused punch. So it's like, well, no, it's not full no, unused. If somebody could come in. Thing that's not used. Not right. Not. Somebody could come in if they had a, a $20 punch card and they only use $10 worth of it. They could return that to us. We'd identify who it is. We'll take a record of it. We'll return all those cards to Casella once we identify who they are and, and send a check to those folks. So. That's all I had under uh, manager's uh, report tonight. Okay. Uh, moving on to business. Here we go again. Resignation of school board member. Yes, uh, <coughs> as you know, and I believe I provided a, a copy of it. Uh, uh, Emily. Um, easy, easy. You better bite your tongue. Uh, this Neto, Aaron Neto has, <laughs> has decided. Just uh, let that reflect to the camera that it has been corrected. Uh, I was looking at you at the time, so. And it's uh, of no relation. Yeah. Aaron has submitted her resignation um, effective immediately for the um, for the um, RSU 21 school board. Um, what that what that does for us is that we had a. Um, we have a process of procedure that generally. Uh, is is followed in that um, uh, the uh, select board has the ability to appoint a uh, representative uh, to the school board um, before the next um, annual town meeting, at which time the um, the annual town meeting uh, we would be able to appoint or have people run for that position and then fill the position, which is, I believe, Aaron's uh, term was for one additional year. So it would go until uh, 2025. Um, the timing is is a little bit off for us at this point, but I believe that the town attorney has come up with a, um, a work around to provide a shorter amount of 
uh, time in terms of um, advertising and submitting uh, nomination papers to the town, so on and so forth. So I provided that uh, that opinion to you in your packet. Um, essentially, um, normally we would have anywhere between 40 and 60 days uh, to have a nomination. Um, the municipal officers, by their actions, may designate a shorter period of time for availability of nomination papers but not less than 10 days before the filing deadline and may designate a shorter time period for the final date for filing nomination papers, but not less than 14 days before the election day, if you can remember all of that. Um, what she's suggesting is that given that the election is uh, on the 11th, um, normally would be uh, uh, been available by March 4th, She's indicating, however, based on an abbreviated uh, period allowed under um, RS, uh, RSA 2428-4E, in situations like this, the town now faces the new deadline would be no later than May 28th, with availability of nomination papers at least 10 days prior to whatever the date the select board designates for the filing deadline. Would you just having the filing deadline as late as possible would be May 28th, which would mean that nominations papers would be made as soon as possible, but not later than May 18th. So um, um, we've also we also received our ballots from the state already. So on this particular case, people could file their nomination papers or pull their papers out, get them returned to us. We will develop a hand ballot which would then be submitted to our uh, voters uh, on June 11th when they vote, and then they could select one of those people to serve um, the remainder of that term, which would be one year. So, but you as, um, as a board have to appoint somebody um, prior to June 7th, uh, as the charter describes. So, um, not sure if you have anybody in mind what uh, what may we may want to do, but um, you have a few options here, but something I think that we can get out to the voters and get the papers out, uh, make it known to folks, the availability of it, and uh, hopefully we get some folks that want to run for that one year position. You got a question, Dan? Yeah. Why, why do we have to go through nomination papers? We, we can appoint somebody to fill her term. We've done this in the past, right? Yeah, you're, you're supposed to fill it until the next annual town meeting, which would be the 11th. So, so um, in the past, I think we've had longer time period between that time. But right now, the way the chart is written and the way the law, the state law is, you, you've got... So in that essence, you'd be you'd be appointing somebody from the seventh to the eleventh, and then after the eleventh, there would be somebody who would be taking the position based on the voters oh, yeah. on the on the uh, annual town meeting that evening. Does the scenario that Chip Bassett presented to us is that an option? where we slide an existing member into Aaron's position and then have a vote on, or does it still produce a vacant spot that needs to be appointed by this board? The, well, she she's serving right now. So there's no way that you could actually slide her into this. There's no, so that yeah. doesn't, that she, doesn't it, work. she sent us a letter asking to do that. Right. I don't know if you read that or not. No, nope. she sent All a letter I saw was Chip's that letter. she would be willing to take her, the rest of her spot. Oh, you you received that letter? Yeah. I didn't receive a letter. I don't know anything about that. I thought that I went to everybody. Up. I'll have to look to see, but I thought it went to the whole select board and you. But she sent a letter at saying that she would be willing to fill that spot, the remainder of Aaron's spot. Well, she's going to be serving until... Um, until the end of the fiscal year for her, which would be June 30th. So right. um, obviously she could, she could run, I guess, for the one year spot, if she so desired to fill that spot. But well, we have somebody currently running unopposed, right? No, we have two folks two that posts. are running two. All right. Yeah. I thought there was only one. 
<clears throat> right. Yeah, right. running for the same position. Yep. Because right. this came up, at, you know, obviously after. So, I mean, it doesn't make sense to appoint somebody for two days. <laughs> it may not even be a meeting. <laughs> that is that is correct. It right. may not even be a meeting. It may be immaterial at this point. Right. Um, and you folks may decide to just hold off until the voters decide on the 11th. Yeah, I mean, we still, we would have to get candidates. We'd have to do interviews. We'd have to do. You know, uh, well, not necessarily. You can appoint. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you could try. We could just appoint an interview. Correct. Yeah. You could find someone who sat on the board before that's familiar with what happens with the school board and then just put them for that little short little period of time to get you out of that having to have somebody there. It just doesn't make sense for maybe one Yeah, meeting. it's kind of a catch-22. One meeting, if that. So maybe we need to get in touch with if Brittany would be willing to not only post it, but also get in touch with her and let her know that if she would like to do that, she will need to come in and take out nomination papers and let her know what the time frame is to get them back. Correct. Yeah. I mean, if you folks decide that tonight, I mean, obviously you're going to have to vote that to go to the abbreviated um, uh, filing deadline, and then we can immediately get those papers prepared and ready out so folks can run for that one-year position if they so desire. Are you... You two are more involved than anybody on this board for the RSU, but are you aware of any pending votes that, like if we went vacant on a spot until June 14th or whatever, is there a, is there a vote that would be pressing? I, I don't believe so, but I can I can reach out to Gail. I, I think Gail is, they're probably going to appoint a new a new chair. Oh, tonight is, is um, candidates night. So I... Yeah. It's in case people are listening in so they can hear. Yeah. This evening is the vote? Yeah. All right. Yeah, it's supposed to be candidates night tonight, but they're probably bringing up that stuff. It wasn't candidates. Candidates night is not, I think, Yeah. So, I mean, I, I can certainly reach out to, and maybe Keith can also to Dr. Cooper, or I can reach out to Gail. I suspect Gail will probably be the chair, but who knows? But yeah. I, I don't. I don't think they have anything super pressing. But. No, they had the. They've already had the big town meeting type vote. So the next big vote on the school budget is our vote in June. Right, right. And I, you know, I mean, I know they got. They're doing a bunch of. Um, um, yeah, they are. I'm losing my mind. I can't think yep. of what on. <laughs> Jack like had yeah, this. members like the appointment of, of is that we talking about the, the appointment of uh officers no 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 they they've got a bunch of rules uh um policy oh. they, they've got a bunch of policy changes that they don't want to yeah. so, yeah. Jack. Yeah. my turn your yeah. turn jack thank you jack reads uh the reason i came tonight was uh to discuss this very subject. Uh, I have uh, been working with uh, a current board member, uh, Brittany Gerth, uh, for the last year or so. Uh, actually, at, from the very beginning of her uh, term on the uh, school board. And 
she has done a, a, an outstanding job of learning because it takes a good, good number of months to uh, really get up to speed on what it's all about and to understand the process of, of how the school board works or, or should work or could work. Uh, and uh, she has grown into the job. Uh, she is, uh, I think, uh, she has, had, as you know, has, has volunteered to resign from her current uh, position in order to uh, move on to replace Aaron Nadeau's uh, term from her resignation. And uh, I would strongly support that if you can find uh, an appropriate and legal way to do that. Uh, she is currently on the uh, Finance Committee, the Policy Committee, and the Strategic Planning Committee, uh, some of the more important uh, committees on the school board, and is an active participant. Uh, I would hope that uh, you can find a way to accommodate all this. And if she, by leaving, she also opens up her position for the candidates that are running now. And uh, so I've tried to put that together in a summary letter uh, that I'd like to give to you. And uh, I strongly recommend that uh, you find find a way to get this accomplished. Uh, be happy to take any questions. Thank you. Thanks, Jack. I mean, she's she's offered to fill the spot. Seems like the most obvious solution here. Appoint her to take Aaron's. That solidifies her for another year. No, it only solidifies her. It only no. solidifies her till the June yeah, meeting. June, June uh, meeting. She would so solidify her only. It would solidify her only till the June eleventh vote. Uh, yeah. That's correct. Yeah. If somebody doesn't run, then that position would be filled by appointment by you folks until the next next year. Right. 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 So I mean, we we can make determination that I don't know if we can do that or not. That we don't fill it until after June. I mean, we, we can go through the process of the nomination papers and see if somebody somebody runs. If somebody doesn't, then after the June. But I I don't see how we can put Brittany in at this point until after after June. I I agree. Yeah. I agree. She's still a member of the school board at this point and will and, be and, until... and if she was to resign, then that just opens up another position. It, it, that, that Correct. It, it... Yeah. That would create a whole other situation for us to deal with. Um, right. So... And, and her, she had stated in a letter that um, she had planned on running again. You know, when we had interviewed her, she had planned on running, but she had a child and she felt that um, it was just taking too much time, but because of all of the various committees that she had, she's been on, she's fully aware and she asked if we could, but mm -hmm. at this point we can't. Right? Yeah, I don't I don't see it as a as an alternative right now. You know, if we were if it was six months in the rears, then it would be something that you could consider, I suppose. So I, I I think what I what we do need is um, a vote, a motion in a second to to uh, go with a um, a shorter time period availability for nomination papers. <clears throat> we would have them um, available um, prior to uh, I would say our deadline would be. Um, the filing deadline to have them read back would be May 28th, which would then give us the ability to put together a vote, um, um, a ballot with those on it. 
um, folks would have to then come in and see the clerk and get their nomination papers and get their required signatures in order to get on the ballot. Um, so it, it just be expedited, that's all. Um, uh, the attorney's suggesting that we that we do it prior to May 18th, but May 18th would be our drop dead deadline to have um, notice put out. So if, if you folks decide to go with the expedited or the shorter version, then I'll speak with the clerk tomorrow and we'll we'll get that going ASAP so folks can come in and pull in nomination papers and prepare uh, for that position. Remember, it's only a one year position. It goes from um, yeah, until 2025 of next year. So. so we would have new ballots made or just an additional ballot? It would just be an additional ballot. The state ballots are already in. Yeah. So this would be a, this would be an old fashioned write in ballot. Um, yeah. and we would pull out one of our old, uh, ballot boxes and folks would have to put their ballots for that school okay. member into that box then they would have to uh, hand count those to determine who um, who gets that spot. So uh, let's see if I've got this right. If we do nothing, if we vote to do nothing, then as of July 1st, we can appoint someone to fill that one-year position. Do we have that option? Or do we have to put out nomination papers uh, to get somebody to run for that term. The suggestion of the attorney is that um, we we get those nomination papers out there and, and allow the public the opportunity to serve if they so desire instead of um, uh, waiting to see what's going to happen. And I guess to your argument too, Velmer, we may not get anybody that wants to run for that one-year position. And if that's the case, then you, as Dan had alluded to, then you would appoint, and that appointment would be for one year. Okay, so if they take out papers, they have to be back by 528. That's the deadline to get the papers back? That is correct. Okay. Yeah. yeah. To do it. I mean, you yeah. cannot file a chart. Yeah. It's not like a post file chart. But we still have, you still have to appoint somebody between now and then. According to Leah, you got to appoint somebody before June 7th. Right. I don't know why she says June 7th. We got 30 days because the resignation letter says May 13th. Mm -hmm. Why isn't it June 13th? Right. Which is two days after the election. No, today's, right. today's May 13th. And she resigned on Wednesday. I'm just looking at the letter is dated May 13th, so we got it. Oh, she sent a letter out last week. That's what I have. I don't have. I don't have it with me. May eighth is the one in the packet. May eighth. Oh, is is that one in the packet? Karen. Yeah. Oh, it's good. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. The one from. Yeah, that, I think. I think the original Tom was from May eighth. Um. Yeah. All right, so I need a motion then for nomination ballots to be posted May 18th, right? Or available May 18th. So, yeah, to be be available um, prior to May 18th, but returned to no the town time. clerk by the 28th, 28th of May in order to to meet the, the shorter deadline. So moved. Motion by Dan, second by Tom. Any more discussion on this? All those in favor? So um, I just fall just to circle back. We're going to hold off on appointing somebody at this point and go through this process um, to see what what it, what comes of it. Okay. Well, unless unless somebody from the board knows somebody that could hop in right now. <laughs> well, at this point, it would be more than three days. Yeah. Right. They've got a couple of meetings.
Did you have something, Sam? No. no. Oh, no. All right, so that covers your first three, right? Yes, that, that takes care of all of those. Well, if we appointed someone, what would be their term? Two weeks? Till the end of the, till till, the, till, till, till till the June, end of June? Till 13th yeah, or whatever. Till, June, yeah. till the vote of June. So it'd be a month. Yep. Right. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. I I see your argument. If we only get one person that puts it in, then yeah, we could appoint them. Sure. What What was that comment again, Tom? If we have one person picks out David, yep, we just appoint that person. Yeah. So it just carries the ticket over. Oh. Thank you, Diane. Well, my, my only concern really is, and, and I can find out what they have moving forward on the agenda, because I'd hate to lose a vote for, you know, for the town of Arundel. And I'm not sure that they've got a, usually at this time of year, they don't do a whole lot of stuff except policy. Um, but I, you know, I would prefer that maybe I can, I can ask and see what they've got, what their plans are moving forward, because I don't really want to lose a vote from an Arundel citizen. Okay. Yeah, I can make some inquiries and figure out what's going on. And if we have to, we can always come together and discuss it again if we need to. Yeah, and I'll reach out. Uh, when I get home tonight, I'll get log back on and find out who the chair is and I'll reach out to the chair. If we have to get together for a quick meeting or something to a point, we can do that. Right, Mr. Chair? Yeah. I, I just want to cover all our bases though. So let's say nobody pulls papers and we appoint Brittany after the election. I just want to make sure we have this right. Is there any proactive steps we can take because then we're going to open up another can of worms. No, because Brittany's up. Right. Never mind, never mind, never mind. Right. Never mind. Check that. She, Check that. She, she's up and she, yeah, she's yeah. not running. She did yeah. not run. Right. So. Okay, all right. It's very nice of her to step up and want to want to fill that for that year yeah. period too, by the way. I, I will follow up with her email just to make sure that it went out to everybody and it went out to you. But I didn't, I haven't seen it unless I, Deleted it. All right, we have a confirmation of an election warden. Yes, the town clerk's looking to have Sylvia Peral as as uh, election warden for the upcoming election. Yeah, I make a motion. I make a motion. We appoint Sylvia as the uh, election warden. Motion by Velma. Second by Phil. All those in favor? Sign away. It's nice. The, the email went to town clerk, didn't go to you. It okay. went to us and town clerk. Gotcha. All right, we're looking to extend business hours, right? For voter register. Um, yeah, just to modify, requesting the waiver of the evening hours as we've done in the past and have the hours coincide with the hours of operation at the town hall. So moved. Motion by Dan. Second. 
That was a tie. So I'm going to give that to Tom because he doesn't get a lot. Okay. Um, second by Tom. All those in favor? We do need to amend for tonight because we don't have any payroll and payable warrant on here. It's that's correct. And the payable warrant's pretty big. You didn't notice that. All right, we need some action on the three food truck applications. Yeah, the first one is um, um, I'd like to keep that one separate than the other two because the other two are Vinegar Hill. This one is a standalone at 1654 Portland Road for um, uh, doing business as Pig Pen's Barbecue. Um, the code officer has looked at the location Evidently, the applicant wanted to have two um, two carts there, um, and he has been regulated to only one per the uh, CEO's uh, comment within his document. The location has been used in the past, too. Uh, I, I think several years ago, we had a, um, a portable dog, hot dog, cart that was located there for a while. I'll make a motion that we approve the application for Soul Slice Pizza LLC DBA Pig Pens Barbecue. Motion by Velma. Second by Tom. All those in favor? That one passes. The other two we could roll together. Yeah, the other two are um, Terra Terra Firma and Souk Thai Mobile, both for locations within the Vinegar Hill Music uh, Theater property, which has already received conditional use approval for food carts at their location. And neither one of these put it over the three truck. On any uh, given date. No, the the only one that's put them over the three truck, and I just have to follow up with them is uh, we have a July twenty first um, uh, situation where Crepe Elizabeth, uh, the treat truck, and Ter Terra Firmer are on location. So I will have to just follow up with them to ensure that they either go back to the planning board for uh, another location on the conditional use application or they eliminate one of those trucks from being being on site so they have three spots that are available right not any longer they don't right okay they only have two they spots have two because of the 200 foot limit correct right okay that that was my question is there anybody else on germany's date so okay so somebody somebody will have to Back. Well, I'll just follow up with the with the uh, marketing manager at Vinegar Hill and tell him the situation. Um, we'll go from there. Dan, you're trying to take credit for the question I just asked. Like that's that was pretty much the same question I just asked, only you worded it different, and now you're trying to take credit for it. I just want to make sure that we're not within the 200 foot limit. You said you said more than three. They're not allowed more than two. All right, looking for a motion on the food trucks. So move. Motion by Velma. With the condition that 
on the 21st, there are no more than two food trucks. Right, with that condition that on June 21st, there are July. no more, I mean, I'm sorry, July, July 21st, there are no more than two food trucks. Motion by Velma. Second. For a second by Dan. You can't. <laughs> All those in favor. One abstain. One abstention. One abstention. <laughs> Be nice if we could start getting samples of all these food trucks, but, you know. <laughs> That's a good idea. Be a condition of the approval. I like so they're right, they're right there at Vinegar Hill. They're open to the public. Right. Can we can we put that in our orders that they have to <laughs> fill the table up? <clears throat> all right, liquor license renewal for Dutch Elm. Everything checks out. Yeah, I, nothing's changed. It's ongoing yep. um, business that's been with you for many, many years. Obviously, I make a motion we approve as submitted. A liquor motion license by, by Phil. Second, second by Thelma. All those in favor? We have another liquor on. license for TNT event services. Yes, this is a uh, qualified caterer that's located off of Senate Road. Um, um, th this is a little bit different in that um, all of her catering functions are off site. So what she's requesting here is that she has a store, a locked storage container at her facility on Senate Road to uh, have her alcohol at. So if she needs to provide that at some remote location, she can take it there. So uh, what she's asking for is her qualified catering application for approval. So this is just storage, there'll be no serving. Of that is correct. There's no serving there, none of that going on. And can we do like a tasting session? <laughs> That's an ordinance in town. We have to like for, for liquor storage. We need to. I don't know. First time I've heard of that. Yeah. This is a requirement by the town, Keith? To... No, it's a liquor application. It's an application for on-premise liquor application. But she's not serving or anything. We, right. We... But there's a there's a notation if she has alcohol. If you look on page, um, let me see it. Let me find it for you, excuse me, just for a minute. You look on page two under um, indicate the type of license applying for, you can see that she's noted qualified caterer. So she's requesting from the state that she's requesting qualified caterers license, liquor license application. All right, looking for a motion for TNT event services. So moved. Motion by Velma. Second. Second by Dan. All those in favor? Motion came. Now we've just got an added payroll. Payroll and warrant. Yep. You have payroll, uh, payroll and, and payable warrant.
I make a motion we sign the payables and payroll warrant. Motion by Velma. Seconded by Second. Phil. Thank you. All those in favor? Anything else? Yep. Mr. Dubois. Um, fire station upgrade. What are we doing with that? What do you want to do? I I've I have an advertisement out there to try to get people to be on a uh, committee. Um, my my strong recommendation would be to get other folks other than the elected officials or folks that are associated with the fire service to be on this this committee. So I would say give it a little extra extra time to see where it's going to take us. So. You know, we, we reached out to try to get people for this. I, you know, my concern is the longer we wait, the more expensive this is going to be. And, you know, we, to me, we need to set a date that if we don't have anybody by such and such, any more people by such and such a date, we put a committee together of the people that we have. Because it's, you know, we are talking a year, maybe, if luckily, by the time we get this built and it's, you know, price just keeps going higher and higher and higher. You know, what are, what are we waiting for? We're waiting for people. Well, how long are we going to wait for people? Well, I, I sort of I sort of agree with that, but I think the issue that I have is that I want to make sure that um, that the board has the necessary support from the residents that when we do go to a um, a an annual or a special town meeting that we're going to get the support we need in order to move forward with the project. I don't want you to put in all the effort and then have it. I've seen that happen in a variety of times and we were so successful with our municipal building project that um, I sort of, I, I guess that's what I'm hoping that we're going to get again, but um, that's why I've been very, very delaying on, um, really trying to push it any harder than we already are. This is also not, not taxpayer money. We're not reaching out to, for our taxpayer money. We're using TIF money for this. So a little bit different scenario from a perspective of residential approval. You Correct. Know. Well, the voters will still have to approve it. Agreed. But yeah, but Agreed. once we explain what where the money's coming from, obviously. Yep. So we have a meeting June 24th. That's after the town vote. You want to make that the date? We don't hear anybody by June 24th. We'll set a date for a committee meeting. All right. I'd like to. Yeah. Done. And I had I had made a comment, and I think part of this might be my problem, is when the original request for people to assist with this project went out, and I understand why Keith did it, because Keith was trying to get people who've been involved in the trades to be involved in the project. But that it was limited to that. So I said, you probably really should have people from the public involved in it as well, because that's what, how we've always done things. So I I think that's one of the reasons why you didn't get a lot of people. One, because of trades right now, as some people can attest, everybody's got more work than they can shake, shake a stick at. But some of it is also involving people in town that have been here short periods of time, long periods of time, that just want to be involved in the process. Um, so not everything has to be done by somebody that's in the trades. Um, but the actual original thing was limited to just people in town that had experience in the trades. So I think you took part of your town out. So I, I would say that we put out another request. You know, I know that when it came out, I was contacted by a couple of folks and I had said that we are open to anybody as we have been in the past. You know, we're open and I don't know if they ever went back and. I have two people that have shown an interest. So I have two on a list. Yeah. 
Well, I'd say we repost it asking for anyone who has any interest to come forth. Yeah, I'll have to look at my advertising. I didn't think I narrowed it down like that. So if I did, that wasn't my intention. I wanted to do what we had done in the past. So I'll double check it. I know it's on the website now. So it's just a matter of, of fine tuning it, I suppose. Yeah, put it in bigger print. Sand Sheriff font, yellow underline. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Exclamation points all over the place. Anything else? Huh? Looking for a motion to adjourn. At 7 50 p.m. So fifty. Motion by Dan. Second by Phil. All those in favor. Thank you for coming, everybody.